So good evening. My name is Craig Blanchett. It's my pleasure to bring you this uh, Habits of Health, um, Dr. A's Habits of Health book, a chapter review. Tonight we're actually going to be going over chapter three. It's uh, the subtitle of chapter three is called Motivation for Change. And Dr. A talks about um, uh, we have to figure out what motivates us to change. And there's two types of things that motivate us. One is trying to solve a problem. So we're trying to get less of something we don't want. And the other is desire, desired outcome based, which is trying to get more of what you do want. And it's profound in the ways that we look at this as to if this will be another one of those diet things or whether this will actually be lasting change. And so i um, super excited uh, to have you all with me tonight. I've got um, a couple folks that I've asked to um, uh, uh, review the lesson and, and um, kind of co-host with me today. And so I've got Gina, and uh, Gina's from Pendleton. Say hello to everybody, Gina. Hello, how are you guys? Uh, good to have you. And so Gina and I are going to go through this chapter, and, and really – uh, we'll kind of lead a little bit of discussion, but I, I'm really eager. This chapter is so important to getting this, to like, if we get this fundamental piece, it will change the yo-yo nature, our yo-yo, it'll change our yo-yo ways, if you will. And um, so we're going to go through this a little bit today. And one of the main things, um, there's a... There's a video out there and a, a topic on the Habits of Health Calls. It's called Pain Pushes Until Desire Pulls. And I was listening to another coach. Um, she has, a, um, you guys, many of you know her name is Kim Stewart. And she was talking about this. And she said, if you're struggling with staying on your plan and the discipline of taking care of yourself, you probably don't have enough pain because you've made some changes and you're not where you used to be. And she said, you need, you're going to start needing to look more and more deeper at desire. So it can, the, the magnetism of the desire will pull you when the pain of the uncomfortableness is no longer there to push. And so I really like the way she, she um, talked about that. But um, I want to kind of just toss it a little bit over to you there, Gina, and you know, when you were reading through this chapter, um, what was kind of a, an aha that stuck out to you that, um, that why this, why this is such kind a... Because I've read this before, and so it was like a great refresher to go back to it, because I could see myself in some of these pieces where, like you had just said, I saw a lot of gains, and then I kind of let things slip. And I lost focus of my my end result, but it's not really an end result because to me, if I just say, yes, I want to lose weight, but there's more to it than that. For me, it's like I'm a grandma and, you know, and blood pressure and heart hypertension and um, heart disease runs in my family line. And it's like, I want to be around a long time for my grandkids. And I have my grandson with us right now. And it's like, I want to be able to do that a lot longer than just, you know, I'm going to be turning 50. So it's like, I want to spend a lot of time. So it's like, my whole thing is, is I want to be healthy because for the long run, you know, and mm -hmm. to just feel good, have energy to keep up with my grandkids. Yeah. So, that's so that. when I was so reading that, I was like, I totally lost focus for a while because of situational stuff. And I let that situational instead of like, like you said, that main desired pull to mm -hmm. pull me in the right direction. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is one uh, one thing I want to read here, and it comes on page nineteen, and we can kind of read through this together. But um, Doctor A says the um, problem solving motivations almost never leads to lasting change. Uh, typically, uh, here I can share this um, so you guys can read along with me. Um, it says uh, typically you make some changes at first, but later you fall back into your old ways of behaving. Why? Because whenever you experience emotional conflict, that is feelings of negativity, you want it to stop. Basically, you want the pain to go away. Who wants to feel uncomfortable? You think about your health problems or about how much you hate the way you look. Your natural response is to feel terrible. 
in order to end that discomfort, you take actions that make you feel better about yourself. Maybe you go on a diet or vow to change your couch potato ways and start exercising. But those actions aren't motivated by what you want, an outcome you desire. And so they lead into a predictable cycle. And so the first one is that emotional conflict leads you to act or that pain, that pain becomes great enough that the push associated with the pain, you start to move, you act. And then because you've acted, you've done something. Maybe you, some, some people will even just like, they'll, they'll go online and they'll purchase some magic diet program or they'll call up a personal trainer and they'll, they'll, um, They'll order a series of personal training, um, you know, sessions, or maybe they'll go get a gym membership. And believe it or not, the pain is reduced, even though not much has changed. Although there's a little less change in your pocket because of what you did, right? And then feeling better takes the pressure off, lessening the emotional conflict. Less no emotional conflict means there's less reason to continue doing the things that reduce the conflict in the first place. And so that may be, in, when we get down to number four, let's say you've lost 20 pounds and you have 40 to lose, so you're halfway there, but you're just, it's not that urgent anymore, right? Since you feel better, you no longer feel oppressed, you need to follow through on your actions, and then you go back, um, the, you go back to more and more pain, which increases the push, and then eventually go back to number one. Anybody uh, resonate with that? Want to um, share with us a little bit about uh, kind of their own experience with that cycle? Go ahead and you can raise your hand or just um, wave at me and I'll unmute you. Who wants to talk about their old ways of behaving? I know we all do this. So I'll go. I'll like, say something. Yeah, go for it. Hi, Bob. Okay. Hi. Um, yeah, because when I started my health journey, um, I was looking at uh, my son's wedding in about a year, although at the time I didn't really know. My video's not working. I'm sorry, Craig. So, anyway, um, uh, but it wasn't until I actually realized after the wedding was over and everything that that wasn't really my overall goal my overall goal was to stay healthy for my disabled daughter and so once once i i realized that motivation that's the, that's what that end goal and that's going to be lifelong for me so i now approach health as a lifelong thing as opposed to a short term thing mhm mm excellent excellent yeah, and that, that takes time to calibrate, I think. Um, you know, we, we go through a process of we do the yo-yo diet enough, and each time we do maybe do a little bit more and realize eventually, hopefully, we've added enough in, things in there that it's no longer a temporary thing, but we've actually, we've actually established a healthy enough lifestyle that we're no longer going back. Yeah, so it, it was the, you know, that the stop, challenge, choose wasn't, I don't want this because I need to get into, you know, I need to look good for wedding photos. It's now, I choose because I need to keep, I want to be there for Janine as long as I can. Mm -hmm. So well, think about that too, Janine's there too, but, but don't forget that you're there too. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely, and I feel better, yes, but if I have to have something that's going to kick me in the you-know-where, that will be always the thing that motivates me. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting that it's very common, by the way, so I'm, I'm yeah. um, agreeing with you that we oftentimes will make health decisions to get healthy, to be healthier for other people before we do it for ourselves. I think that's a, it's an interesting um, phenomenon with human beings we we don't think about ourselves when it comes to hard healthy things um, when it comes to savory things I'll take the cookies before you a question I'll think about me first uh, when it comes to health I think of others before me um, 
So Gina, do you have anything else about this particular topic that jumped out to you or this conflict-driven motivation uh, versus this um, outcome-based motivation? Anything else that stuck out to you on 20 or 21? Um, not really. I think we covered it on that. I yeah. thought that just, and when I read it, I was like, that's exactly where I was. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I yeah. saw some results for a while and just stopped focusing mm -hmm. and looking at my end result and my forever result, really. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the values of why the Take Shape for Life program. It's not Take Shape for a wedding or it's not Take Shape for that photo or Take Shape for, you know, graduation, but it's Take Shape for life. We want to learn how to take a healthy shape for life, you know, the whole the whole time. And um, Dr. A realized that human nature is that we do better in community than we do by ourselves. So every person that's part of our program has a health coach. So you at least have one ally. And then we've, we're learning over time to develop these types of communities. Some are online, some are on site. And like these healthy huddles, where we can have a community of other people so you don't just have one person as your ally, but you have multiple people. And um, I thought on page 22 was pretty interesting here. It says, why modern medicine has failed to stop the obesity crisis. It's in the, um, the sidebar there. Most of our medical system's energy goes towards reacting to and preventing illness. Creating health as obvious as a goal as that may seem just hasn't been part of the picture. Um, most doctors are trying to get you stable. They don't, their job is to, they're trying to keep you from dying and have you be stable. They don't um, um, have really their focus is to actually have you thrive. It's, it's starting to, doctors are starting to be more part of that, but they're not really focusing. They just want to keep people from dying and, um, and health coaches. What we do is more to establish a thriving life. Actually, a lot of times if we work with a health coach and we practice these healthy habits, we don't see the doctor very often at all. Um, anyway, reading on here, it says, only recently are some of my colleagues beginning to shift their focus to exploring why people need help in the first place. They've re they're beginning to realize that healing the sick while a noble cause just isn't as smart as making sure people don't get sick in the first place. What have they learned? that it's not enough to simply react to illness. It's not enough to settle for a state of non-sickness. We need to teach people how to actively create health by building a healthy body, mind, and long-term habits of health. Mary, did you have something you wanted to share on this? No, okay. I concur wholeheartedly. Yeah, awesome. Well, we are about 47 minutes after, and I've got a fun little quiz for us. And so I think we're gonna jump into the quiz. Let me make sure there was Actually, there's one more piece here, is um, uh, when, as coaches, Dr. Ray talks about a teachable moment. And so if we get to a point where we're stuck, it's not, it's not the coach's job to come up with all the answers for you. Uh, one of the things that's, um, uh, that we want to do is we want to support you in what you want. And so our, our job as a coach is to say, is to ask you the question, remind me again, of what, what was important to you, because you get busy living your life, and sometimes you forget about that long-term thing. Remember again about that vacation you wanted to go on? Remind me again about what this was, and you're like, oh yeah, I gotta get focused again. And so, and he talks about setting up that structural tension, which is a recipe for change. And you, you focus on where do I wanna be? Let's say you wanna take a, um, a cruise in a year, or a, a trip somewhere and you're going to go on a backpacking trip for uh, I don't know two weeks so that's a year down the road so there's a lot of things you need to do to make sure that you're successful at that and so you can set up structural tension um, where you have the tension between what you want and where you are and then the structure is how you're going to move your, your it's the ingredients um, how long you cook it if you will and so I love this um, thing at the very end here. It's on page number 27. It says, uh, there's a conversation that goes on inside of our heads. And we all know it, and it happens in a split second. 
and um, it's uh, you have an opportunity uh, to have a banana split. Um, and then you say this, I like the looks of that banana split. Yes, I could have it. And you answer yourself, yeah, that's right, you could. I want to have it. Yes, you do. But I also want to support my long-range goal of optimal health. Sure. I could eat the banana split or not. That's true. If I ate it, it would be harder to create my goal. Well, that's true, too. What do I want more, the banana split or optimal health? Well, optimal health is lasting, and the banana split's going to be over in a few minutes. So I choose optimal health. Therefore, while I could have the banana split, I choose not to have it to support the most important goal. And then on the outside, someone says, all they hear is, would you like a banana split? And you say, no, thanks. But those are all the things that kind of went through your little brain there while you were having that. And um, oftentimes I hear people, they say this, they'll say, um, oh, but you don't have to be perfect. Oh, but you don't have, and they just give themselves so many outs that um, if you don't change and say no to things so you can then say yes, every time you say no to something that takes you away from health, you're saying automatically yes to moving closer to health and so if we don't start making those changes and saying there's certain things that in order to be healthy I'll never have again and I'm willing to let those go because this is so much better hey, what if that was the case go ahead I just wanted to because I had this conversation with someone yesterday where she um, her spouse isn't so supportive all the time with her choice to um to make healthy uh healthy change in her life and so he apparently called from uh he was out on errands and he said hey i'm here at wherever can i what can i bring you for lunch and she said oh i can't i'm having whatever her meal replacement was and so we talked about that and uh, and by changing the the shift from I can't to I choose, um, she empowered herself. Mm, very good. And, and I think that, that for me as well, that goes a long way to um, to to being successful over the course of my life. Mm. It's not that I can't do it, and I'm denying myself in my mind. It's I'm choosing. A better way mm -hmm. so yeah no that was I, I love this chapter it it speaks to me in a lot on a lot of levels well and it's critical for us if we're gonna really if we're gonna live in a healthy body we're gonna have to be disciplined because the things I was, I was talking to uh, uh, someone this morning and I was thinking when we have um, uh, in, in my backyard, um, I have an area that has bark mulch and a, a, a place in the uh, backyard that has gravel. And then I had this metal um, barricade that kept all the gravel in one place and all the bark in the other place. And so it was confined. I had the rock confined and the bark mulch confined, and it was beautiful. But there was some, it was like, it's almost like there was discipline. That bar, that, that created discipline. And when that bar was taken away after a year, the rocks just ended up dissipating. And I'm not sure where they went, but they're not really there anymore. And the bark mulch is just, it's just, it's just all messy. And so I think when, if we really want to experience the intensity of the good things in life, we use that, that discipline to confine the good so that it's concentrated enough that we get to really experience it. But there's a the process of confining it takes discipline, and so I don't know if that makes sense to you. But to me, it that was that was vivid. That it should feel weighty, and it should feel like there's some discipline work involved because it's like you're stacking the goodness in one spot so that it's more vivid. So hopefully that helps you. So we're gonna do the um, chapter three. And so um, you want to grab your um, iPhone or iPad or some type of a device so that you can use it as a remote control to play the game. Let me share my screen.
with you now. We got music too. So what you want to do is you want to point your phone to kahoot.it. Kahoot it. And then type in the game pin number 697563. Come on, who are you guys going to play? Oh, Dean. All right, we got one player. And right now Dean's going to win. <laughs> Dean, Bar, Vivian. Anybody else? Yep. Oh, yeah. Carrie and Eileen. Gina, are you going to be able to do this? I think you're on your iPad now, so maybe not. Let me unmute you. You can do it with your phone, and then you can read the questions from your iPad. So kahoot.it. Go to your browser and kahoot.it. I'm going to wait for one more here. Are you still trying, Gina? No. No, okay. All right. So we'll, we'll still get to see the questions. All right. So here we go, guys. So I'll read the question for you. And then um, and you use your phone to answer. Question number one. To support our primary goal, optimal health, we do things we wouldn't otherwise choose to do. True or false? That is true. Yes, everybody got it right. And Dean is in the lead, followed closely by Vivian. And Barb's in third. Modern medicine fails to stop obesity because it's not enough to simply react to illness. It's not enough to settle for a state of non-sickness. We need to teach people how to actively create health or all of the above. Correct. All of the above. Wow. Good job, you guys. Vivian surges. Look at that. It's better to focus on what you don't want uh, than what you want. True or false? That one is false. Ooh, you guys are on it. Good job, guys. Um, examples of outcome-based goals are running, fitting into a size 8, achieving a healthy BMI, or all of the above. These are outcome-based goals. All of the above. Correct. Oof, man, we got a race on us. Barb surges. Look at that. From third to first, what? Uh, what is the most important question regarding change? Is it how, when, why, or who? It's a little tricky one. Most important question regarding change. It is why. Oh, you guys, look at you. Where did it go? Yep, everyone got that one right. Examples of problem-solving based goals. This is problem-solving versus outcome. Dieting, less knee pain, being sick less often, or all of the above. All 
all of the above. See, all these are problems. Less knee pain, dieting is to lose weight, being sick less often versus being healthy, um, being healthy more often, less knee pain. How about um, running pain free, right? Um, so those are, those are the alternatives of those um, problem solving. All right, an example between problem and desire-based outcomes. A, frog jumps and lizard slither, oscillating versus advancing structures, hang bushes and desire poles, or B and C. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and C is technically correct as well. Oscillating means you're going back and forth. That's like a, uh, what a yo-yo does. Um, and advancing structure is moving towards what you want and then setting a new goal. So pain pushes until desire pull. Same kind of, that's outcome-based. Vivian, look at that. Um, we should lie to ourselves about what we want. True or false? <laughs> Who wrote these questions? <laughs> we should lie to ourselves. <laughs> you all got that right. Look at how good you guys are. Perfect. All right, a couple more. The weight loss phase is only the first of three health phases. True or false? It is true. So with our program, we have three phases, the weight loss phase, and then we have transition, and then we have the optimal lifestyle or um, you know, learning the habits of health. And um, one of the things that a lot of people do is they learn to master the five-in-one, and then they think that that's all they need to know. And the five-in-one is, is actually the foundation of healthy habits, but it's not the way to live. You don't live in the, on the five and one. You can't. And so um, I, have a, I, I put this question in there specifically because I want people to realize that the five and one is the temporary part of the program. While you, the habits that you learn in that program, you will continue on. You won't continue to do the five and one and being fat burned after you've lost your weight. And uh, mastering the five and one is, is um, not necessary uh, for long term. Yeah, but Craig, aren't there really six steps in the entire process? Yeah, um, I mean, it depends on which one you look at, but weight loss, transition, and then everything else, essentially. Right, man. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Um, all tension strives for resolution. True or false? This came right from the book. All tension strives for resolution. According to Dr. A, yeah, true. And so the tension is, um, you you is tension is between what you have and what you desire. And so you're when you desire something and you don't have it, no matter what it is, better relationship. It could be a lot of different things in your life. It it, it strives to resolve itself. That's why we use structural tension and we formally set up the difference between what you want where you are and where you want to be um, with, with this process so that it creates that, that tension that will strive for resolution by, and the resolution is the structural part of it that you, um, the actions you take to achieve what it is that you want. All right, Carrie's in first, Vivian and then Dean. And two, two questions left, conflict-driven motivation is one of the major reasons people yo-yo. Conflict-driven is one of the major reasons why people yo-yo. True or false? True. Yeah. And we talked about that. It's the different, the two two types of motivations: conflict-driven, which is pain motivated, or it's out desired outcome, which is desire motivated. And so one is moving towards what you want. And one is just trying to get less of what you don't want. 
super, I really hope you guys um, um, dwell on this a bit because this is, this is the crux and the key to all of the things that we base our change on. One primary key to your successful change is wishful thinking, discipline, fantasy thinking, or none of the above. Correct, discipline, yep. Discipline is a primary key. You have to actually tell yourself no to the immediate things so you can give yourself a yes to the eventual things. And so tonight we have Vivian in first place, and here, and followed by Carrie, Dean, Barb, and Eileen. So tonight, well job, uh, well done, Vivian, for our champion in tonight's Kahoot. So um, great job, everybody. Um, so hopefully that's fun, uh, that was enjoyable. Next week we're gonna be going over chapter two. We only got two weeks left and we're gonna be done. And then we'll have to find another book to read. Um, and so thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for all of you that played and all of you that participated and um, made this a great thing. Again, if you want to join us each week, um, we do our chapter uh, review at 6.30 Pacific. And you can get there by going to zoom.us. And then you click join a meeting. And then you dial in this meeting number, 503 nine seven four one six seven one thanks everybody